Kate here. I'm super excited to share this video with you because it's a project I've been working on part-time for the last three months and uh, something I kind of struggled with. I had to do a lot of research to figure this out and couldn't find a solution online. I even went into all three big named hardware stores in my area and I'm in Canada but I'm not naming names and nobody internally, none of the associates knew what to do and they actually told me it wasn't possible so I have proved you all wrong. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to transform cabinets with frames and overlay hinges to hidden hinges with new doors. I can't wait for you to watch it. next part I'm going to show you how to replace a single cabinet door. One of the first things I had to do for each of the cabinets was do the initial install. So attach the new door to the frame here. Okay. Now in this case I know that because I'm overlapping a little bit here I need to cut back into the frame same width so that's what I'm gonna do now I've marked off where the hinges are gonna sit so I'll start cutting now going to clean this up a little bit so that I know I have a level surface for the hinge to sit in. I cleaned the cupboard up a little bit and painted over the wood and now I'm going to install the door. That's pretty good. That one's done. In this next part, I'm going to show you how to fit a cabinet door that doesn't quite meet the inside frame. So what I'll be doing is adding about a half inch to the outside frame, which will shift that cabinet door over slightly so that it hits the inside frame. Here's what's happening with these two cupboards here behind me. They're the exact same size. They open and close this way. I tested out the first cupboard door just to see where it lands and I know it doesn't even meet the middle frame so I have to modify this cabinet slightly. The first thing I'm going to do is take this off then I'm going to add on a half inch piece of wood to the outside frame here and then this is going to bring it out about half inch so that when this cupboard door closes it actually hits the frame and overlaps the edge of it slightly. You can see on this side, I'm already doing that. I've added a half inch piece of wood by three quarters and then the height of the cabinet. And I've clamped it with some carpenter's glue and I'm gonna follow up with a nail gun and make sure everything is secure, paint it, add on the hinges and then the cabinet door. I got my wood covered in carpenter's glue, ready to go. to try. I finished the modifications to this cabinet here with the two doors, painted everything, it's dry so now I can install the cabinet doors. I'm going to start by holding the door up, marking off the holes that I need to pre-drill, then drilling into the side frame here, and then I will attach the cupboard doors. Okay, the hinges have been installed with the cupboard door, so let's see if it works. Yeah, we're good and it aligns with the one next to it, so 
I'm pretty happy. I'll just do a couple adjustments to the hinges, make sure that everything is perfect, and then I'm good to go. This cabinet by far required the most uh, modifications. So I added a half inch here and three quarters of an inch on this side. Same thing, three quarters of an inch on this side. And then the drawers, I'm gonna have to move these in about three quarters of an inch just so I can center the new drawer front with the new space here. I, I couldn't find a cupboard door that was the same size so I, I gotta do what I gotta do. Now I'm going to install the cabinet doors on this base cabinet that I modified so that I could fit these doors. So I've already pre-drilled two holes for the screws. So now I'm going to attach the door. And there you go, one more down. In this part, I'm gonna tackle the sink cabinets. So I've got two cabinet doors, and then I've got two fake drawer fronts that I'll be replacing with new fake drawer fronts. I went to install the doors on the cabinet right below the sink, and as you can see, I did measure properly. The opening was 15 inches or just below 15 inches, but because of the hinges that I'm using, they sit out a little bit too far to the right. And so what I'm gonna do, and I'm testing it on the other side, is I've added a half an inch right here of wood to the frame, and I've glued it on. I'm gonna secure it to the cabinet, and then at least when I install the hinges here, that's gonna sit overlapping the middle frame here just a little. A closer look at what I did to fix the issue with the cabinet under the sink. I cut a one half inch piece of wood to three quarters of an inch so that it aligns with the frame. I used carpenter's glue to secure it and I'm clamping it overnight and then I'll be securing it using some screws to the inside of the cabinet. Then I can install my new hinges and door. Okay, I finished installing my hinges on top of that extra piece of wood that I added to the frame of the cabinet and here is the moment where we find out if it worked. Yes, it worked, it's level, it's exactly where I want it and uh, now I'm going to do the other door. Woohoo! Now I'm going to take off this fake drawer front so I can replace it with the new style drawer front. Well that was pretty easy. I have a few of the old staples left over so I'm going to pop those out. I'm not too concerned about removing them completely. I have a really deep sink behind here so it's going to be really difficult to attach the um, new fake drawer fronts. but. I'm going to use a really heavy duty construction glue and then clamp it. Now I'm going to clean this up by sanding it and I'll paint over it just so that it has a nice fresh clean look before I put on the new drawer front. I tested this out overnight on the other side just to make sure that I had a good solution for this because as I said before I can't uh, screw anything in from behind or use a nail gun even um, to secure this fake drawer front onto the cabinet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some really heavy-duty construction adhesive this is uh, worked really well that thing is not moving so I'm gonna show you how I did it 
got my construction adhesive on and now I'm going to take the front, press it against the cabinet and make sure it's level, okay, and then I'm going to clamp it. Once I've got it in the right spot, I'm just going to mark it at the bottom and the top just to make sure that if it shifts at all, I know and I can adjust it. Okay, this one was a little bit of a doozy, but I've managed to get it in place. Reason being, the sink is so close to the front of the cabinet that so I can't get anything behind there. This was this is even, you know, a little iffy. But anyway, what I did was I added the clamps to the top and the bottom. One connects to the inside of the sink, and then I had to add some um, width here, so I added a couple pieces of wood to make sure it stays in place. I'm going to keep checking this every half hour or so, make sure it's not sliding, which is why I put on the, uh, I marked off the level points, and uh, let's cross our fingers and hope this one stays in place. In this next part, I'm going to show you how to fit doors that overlap slightly on the inside frame when you shut them both. It's going to involve me cutting into the frame slightly, but I'll show you how to do that now. For these two cupboards here, I marked off the midpoint on the center frame of the cabinet. Once I installed the hinges with the door, I noticed that it was overlapping by about a quarter of an inch, so I need to cut into the frame by about a quarter of an inch so that the hinges sit back a quarter of an inch and then these two doors will meet in the middle. So as with the other doors, I marked off the top and bottom of the hinges so I know exactly where they need to sit and then I'm going to use a saw and cut into them. That's the first door, and it looks like we're good. We're not overlapping the center. Okay, both doors are installed, so we're gonna see how they work. Pretty good. They line up really nicely. Woohoo! I'm going to show you two ways to change the drawer fronts. So there'll be two different ways I'm showing you how to do this. One involves just taking the, the current drawer front off and replacing it with a new one. And the other will be taking the actual drawer completely apart, cutting it down to size so that I can fit it into the cabinets that I had to modify. Here's the first example, basic, just replacing the drawer front. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off the knob because you won't be able to get off the drawer front without doing this first. Second step is to try to pry the old front away from the actual drawer. Okay, so this is pretty much garbage, but what I'm going to do here is it's probably difficult to see but there are some staples here so I'm going to remove those now. I'm going to use a hammer, bang them directly on and then on the other side I'm going to pull them out using some pliers because these are a doozy to get out. The next part of the installation of the new drawer front is going to happen with the drawer in the cabinet. And the reason being is because I want to align 
the edge of the new drawer front with the new cabinet fronts. Because remember, it was a totally different shape before, totally different width. So I know that new drawer front, I'm not going to be centering it on here. It's going to be slightly off and overlap a little bit more on this side. Glue is on, clamps are ready, so I'm going to put this in place. I'm going to kind of wiggle it around a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure that it aligns with the cabinet below and that it is level. I'm going to kind of squeeze it a bit. Just have to check it again. Every time I move it, it slides. So make sure you got your clamps ready. Once you put the clamps on, you can't close it and check it. So generally what I do is kind of eyeball it once I get the clamps in place. Clamps are in place, so I'm going to leave it for a bit and I'll come back in about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes and check on them. Okay, this is the second type of modification, a little bit more complicated than the first. So let's start off first by removing that knob. The next step is to take the drawers apart. Most drawers will just have some nails in the side here, so you can probably use a hammer and hammer from the inside out and then it'll pretty much fall apart. The next step is for me to take out all of those uh, staples and then I'm going to cut this back. Now I know my original drawer is 18 inches wide. I know because I added an inch and a half to the cabinets on either side, so I did three quarters and then three quarters on one side, that I need to decrease this by one and a half inches so that it fits into the new cabinet space. So I'm looking for a 16.5 inch cut widthwise. Do not touch the length. You're only cutting, you know, widthwise. So I've cut the front and the back piece of the drawer, but the next step I need to do is to recenter this piece that glides on the cabinet. So I've marked off the midpoint here now that I've cut this down an inch and a half and I'm going to move it over. Okay, so I've got my drawer all cut. I've recovered the base of my drawer with new liner which makes it look a lot better. And I've put some carpenter's glue on the slots on the sides of the drawer so that I really get um, a good secure fit in there and it's solid. And as I go work my way around the attaching all the drawer sides, I'm going to be just putting one nail in for now, like a little finishing nail, just to keep it secure. just putting the back on. Whoops, I put some um, carpenter's glue on it as well. My sides are put together. I've cleaned up any excess carpenter's glue inside the uh, cabinet drawer and I'm going to let it set and dry overnight. The next day, Here's the drawer that I resized based on the new cabinet sizing. So let's see if it works. There we go. So I just have to add on the new fronts. So I have the construction adhesive on the front of the drawer. Now I'm just going to line it up. Okay, I've let this dry overnight. Everything looks pretty solid, so I'm going to take off all of the clamps. And there is my drawer.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you subscribe below. Also hit that notification button so that when I post new videos, you get notified. You can also follow me on Instagram at kda underscore design. Thank you so much for watching.